Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Big Time Strength Podcast. I'm your host for this week, Amanda Berg. You're going to love our guest this week. His name is Augie Promersberger, and he comes to us out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Augie is a head strength coach at St. Edwards High School, and he's got a lot of great stuff. So I'm excited to talk about him, and I look forward to our great conversation today. Let's take a little bit from our sponsors. First up, Team Builder. As always, thank you, Team Builder, for sponsoring today's episode. They are the leading software for high schools and colleges by providing coaches the ability to write programs online, generate over 13 reports, and even trade athletes remotely for side income. Right now, when you sign up with the code BIGTIME, you will receive a free APRE programming template, which works automatically within Team Builder. No more spreadsheets, no more workout cards to track training maxes that change day to day. Automate your program without outsourcing your program with Team Builder. So we're always grateful to Team Builder. And I'm very excited. We're going to talk about uh, the big time strength in football clinic. And we had a group of students who worked with Team Builder to make a great promo commercial with them. So we are going to show that to the world shortly. So great stuff coming out of Team Builder. Next up, power lift. Taking your athlete's facility from concept to completion can be a challenge. At Power Lift, it's their goal to make the process as seamless as possible from start to finish. Their weight equipment is made with the toughest materials that can withstand excessive use from coaches and athletes. It's sought after for its unique design and customizable appearance. It's a It's affordable and their superior warranty that training facilities want and need. Their weight rooms are designed with the athlete in mind, and they pride themselves on their ability to outfit athletic facilities based on a team with unique goals. That's why high schools, colleges, university, professional sports teams, and athletic performance centers around the world have chosen to help maximize their facilities. Call them today to be contacted with a rep in your area. Also, give them a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to see why clients are Powerlift proud. Great stuff coming out. We also want to make sure to highlight our up-and-coming big-time strength in football clinic. This is going to be Saturday, January 8th at Dasso High School in Minnesota. So if you're in the Midwest... Keep this on your radar. This is going to be presented by Team Builder, Powerlift, the National High School Strength Coaches Association, and Leading Edge Fundraising. 18 premier college and high school presenters, nine strength coaches, nine football coaches, over seven hours of presentations with three rooms presenting at one time. A clinic t shirts included, breakfast and lunch provided. This is going to hands down be one of the best clinics in Minnesota. Registration begins at 7.30 a.m. and presentations begin at 8 a.m. Again, Dasso Cocado High School, 4852 Reardon Avenue Southwest in Cocado, Minnesota. $50 for individuals and $100 for staff. So to guarantee yourself a t-shirt, make sure to go online and register with us for the second annual Big Time Strength and Football Clinic. All right. And speaking of that, our guest today, Augie Promersberger, is going to be our NHSSCA feature presenter. So he will be our uh, feature presenter sponsored by the NHSSCA. So we're very excited. He is a very active member and he puts out some great stuff. So I hope you enjoy our show today. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Awesome. Yes, I'm excited today. We got Coach Augie Promersberger with me. And Coach and I met in Nashville, right? Got to sit down at the table. That's why strength and conditioning is just wicked awesome. And uh, sat down at the table and we had a good, long conversation about strength coach, family, life. And I could tell you had that spark, uh, 
you got something different about you the second that I met you. So excited for you here today. Excited to talk about what we have going on in our future, um, mm -hmm. working together and just some good stuff. So St. Edwards High School. Yep. Ohio, right? Lakewood, yep. Ohio. Lakewood, Ohio, west side of Cleveland. Love it. All right. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, so St. Ed's had a, has had a long storied history and there's a number of private schools in the area and St. Ed's has traditionally been the uh, the blue collar um, part of the city. And we have a, a lot of just blue collar kids and families that are doing their best to um, to uh, to make ends meet and get their kids in a quality education. And that uh, I rolled into St. Ed's in uh, February 2016 and already had the reputation. Football had just won the last two uh, state championships in football. Uh, basketball um, the year prior was state champs. And our wrestling program has won, I think up, we're up to 42 state championships now in wrestling. And I think it's probably 15 or 16 consecutive um, titles. It's something absurd. So if you're going to wrestle in Ohio, you're coming to St. Ed's. That's in the northern half of the state. That's where everybody wants to go. And, and uh, if I remember you right, is it an all boys school? Yes, all boys school. Um, uh, all, all, all boys Catholic school. And um, what drew me to it um, just the nature of the school is how, how invested everybody is from the, from the athletic side, but the academic side, and you have some high quality men at, at this school. I should say men, high quality people at this school, men and women who are doing everything they can to make a better generation of young men. And it, it, they are absolutely relentless. And when it comes to the growth of the school and um, the growth of the young person who's at that school and how just relentless everybody is at getting better, doing, doing something better. And it's, it is constant. It is pushing the boundaries. It's pushing the envelope on the concepts of what everybody else is doing and, and trying to do it better and trying to find a way to be on the cutting edge. And, you know, we're strength and conditioning coaches. That's, we feed off of that sort of thing. Yes. You know, we don't, we don't like the status quo. We don't like to be comfortable and just kind of do the same thing over and over and over again. No, we like relentless growth. That's what my old boss at uh, Weber used to say, Steve Rasley, is that he was all about relentless growth. And that's what that's what drew me to that position. And it's school wide. You know, our administration is relentlessly trying to build on to the building and have um, new programs for all of our student body. Our athletics program is pushing the envelope to build a sport performance facility, um, uh, sport specific portions of that facility from basketball to wrestling to baseball. Um, to football and connecting all of those dots and it, it just does not stop so we had so I, I barely made it to this on time we had 30 kids in the weight room no, nothing scheduled you know just hey we're open at 10 to noon if you want to get your workout in come on in and 30 guys show up and the real special thing is how many of our alumni um come back to see the place, whether it's to work out or just visit everybody. It truly is a family. You know, you think about, you know, how many, how many of your friends coach do you, do you still know from high school and like, and you really connect with, it's usually very little, you know, they were your friends because um, you found yourself in the same geographic location. But when you went to college, y'all made so similar choices to end up in the same place. And, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm so close with a lot of people I was with in college, but not in high school. And yes. at St. Ed's, 
you find a lot of kids whose parents and the kid made a choice to be there because of the values, because of the place that it is. And so you see they have a, a bond you don't see in a lot of other places. Okay. So talk to me about a typical day in the weight room. What's it look like for you? You got 30 people in there today, just hanging out, uh, not hanging there out, was a, a, coming in by choice. Yeah. Very, very light in comparison. So our school day now, they change it. It starts at 845. And um, we have an what's called an enrichment period from 745 to 845. So okay. a lot of clubs meet them. And we used to start at eight. So this is now an opportunity for me to get another group into the room. So that 745 to 845 group is now strictly for in-season teams. Which oh, is, it's, a- but that has made such a difference this year. It's, it's, you almost can't imagine how big a difference that's been. So a typical day. Our first group will be 6 to 6.30. Um, that'll kind of depend on the coach. I know football likes to go at 6. The rest of the rest of the teams like to go about 6.30 a.m. But every morning we have – when we're in full swing, um, in a kind of the middle of a fall or middle of a winter season. Mm-hmm. So everybody rolls in, our off-season teams, 6 or 6.30 until 7.40. As – that off-season group rolls out, in-season group rolls in, 740 to 820. And those in-season workouts, I mean, we have to be short, sweet, and to the point. We're just go, 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 go. You know, hammer the injury prevent. We hit two big primaries that are percentage-based, and they're out the door. And that's making it, that's now making our in-season workouts brutally consistent. You know, you, you have a workout after school, or after a practice, it's already been a long day. And these yeah. kids got parents going, Hey, we got to go, you know, we got, we got to go pick up grandma. We got to pick up your brother. And that gets in the way. And you can't tell a kid, no, you're not going to that. You know, it's, it's unreasonable. So now, I mean, our in season workout attendance, even if the coach doesn't show up is, damn near hundred percent. So there, and that's, you know, there, there's, there's no excuse at that point. So middle of the school day, I'll have two strength and conditioning classes. That's mainly freshmen. Um, we try and make that mainly freshmen. That's about uh, two dozen per, per class, two classes. Um, our, uh, what we call community period, which is an, a very long lunch period. So Kids can eat, they can go to their counselor, they can go to their club meetings and so on. But we will use that. Um, Some sports will have their in-season workouts during that time. Um, It's not the best, but it does become a big makeup workout time. Or a lot of times, especially kids that have a nagging injury, that's when they're gonna come in and work on specific needs. Or just like, coach, I worked out this morning and I just don't feel right. And that's the, that's the opportune time to take care of that. So, so after school, what's all that? Athletes? So are you working with all athletes then? Yes. Okay. So fair point. Um, student athletes make up about 80% of the student body at St. Okay. So it's roughly 750 to 800 student athletes out of a thousand that um, just shy of a thousand boys that go to school school at St. Ives. Wow. Okay. So, and they, cool. Yeah, and, there, and there's something for everybody. We actually now added a sailing team. Okay. You know, so maybe not the powerlifting crew in that one, but I mean, there, there's something for everybody. You know, we have run, we have the we have the the standard ones: football, soccer, wrestling, basketball. But we have hockey and lacrosse and baseball and track but we have rugby we have sailing we have the swim and diving so there is there's something for everybody and uh after school we'll have our first group was usually off season this time this first semester it's usually freshmen and we'll do all the freshmen from st ed's in that one group 
and that'll be 315 to 430. We'll do a, um, a 430 to 530, 545 group. And then twice a week, we'll have our fifth through eighth grade strength and conditioning camp um, for prospective students uh, twice a week. Okay, so, so early long story morning. short, it's about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Full speed ahead. Don't stop. If we get a <laughs> if we get a free moment during the day, it's time for us to train as a, a strength and conditioning staff. Like, okay, we're it's time for us to sling the weights and hit the sprints and do all that. Okay, so you know my next question then. Mm -hmm. Early morning sounds to me like you're going late. Where, what are you doing to that work, that work-life balance? Um, you have two kids, right? Mm -hmm. Married, two young kids. Yeah, uh, just out of the second, about eight months ago. Okay. So Almost nine yeah. months. Woo. All right. Talk to us a little bit about, I know that you take um, work-life balance as an important thing. Where does it come in with you and how do you make it work? So the the big thing for me is I am not going to miss a bedtime story. That that's been a big one for me. And, and to be honest, that's how our conversation started. And this must've been in 2018 when I first found out I was going to be a daddy and I was freaking out because I mean, my dad was an old school guy that, you know, what work came first. You got to put food on the table. It's going to be work, 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 work. And that's going to become, that's going to go, that's going to be the first priority. And uh, I've sort of um, was born into that work ethic. And you kind of have to have it if you're going to be a strength coach. But now it's got to be about being efficient at it. You know, you have to you have to start working your ass off. There's no doubt about it. You better get real comfortable with an 18 hour day uh, as a young strength coach, I think. And everybody that told me, um, if I could go back and do it again, I would have taken more vacations and worked less. I don't buy that for a second, especially when you're a young coach. I mean, that's how are you going to separate yourself among guys that know more than you and more experience if you're not out working them? Just flat out. You got to catch up. At this point now, it's about being efficient. Um, when I get home, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing strength and conditioning stuff when I get home. I, I will not do it. I'm going to come home. You know, sometimes I, every now and then I might have 15 minutes before bedtime, but I'm not touching work. I'm dropping my, my gear off. I'm grabbing my girls and we're doing bottles. We're doing bedtime stories and any, any, you know, if I have a half hour or I have an hour before bedtime, you know, it's all about them. I'm not doing, I'm not, answering phone calls. I'm not dealing with any BS on the outside. So, and, and, you know, once in a while, there's going to be something that requires your attention, right? You got to go, honey, you know, everything hit the fan today. There's going to be, not, I got to take care of this. I got to take care of it now. And it sucks. I got to do it, but I'm not, that's not going to happen two nights in a row. And that's, I think that's a very important part. And now is my, my eldest is now almost three. And so I try to involve her in what we're doing at St. Ed's. She'll come to the weight room and she'll play with the weights and she'll meet all the basketball players and the football players. She loves watching football and basketball. Um, if it's on the weekend now, I'm, I'm starting to get her into the hunting lifestyle a little bit. So, so, um, over the summer, we would take her to pick up trail cameras with me. And uh, as I'm getting ready for deer season, and it works so well that she has a, a Green Bay Packers jersey, but it looks just like the St. Ed's one. So she thinks it's the St. Ed's jersey. <laughs> and uh, when my wife took her for some girl time to get um, new shoes and do girl stuff, she picked out hunting boots. And I went, yes, this plan is working. <laughs> a little bit, but that's, um, I mean, you think about the effort we put into a strength as being a strength coach and being good at what we do, or as good as we can be at what we do, you better double that effort 
in a smaller amount of time when it comes, if you're going to have work to life balance. Yeah. And you're going to be tired, you know, get used to that. You're not, you're not going anywhere without being tired. That's just part of the deal. So how about like kid pickup? Do you and your wife switch off? Do you have, she has mornings, you have afternoon or? That's usually it. So we're very fortunate that both my mom and my mother-in-law um, being their first grandkids, they want to babysit all the time. Yeah. So and that and it's worked for us. So there's maybe uh, um, one day a week we have to use daycare if that. But on days where my girls have daycare, you know, I, I have to be more comfortable now putting our last group on my assistant or assistants, yeah. you know, assistant and interns and be like, listen, you guys got to knock this out. I got to go pick up the girls. Yeah. You make a super valid point that, you know, we talk about, yeah, as far as with our spouse or, but mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I could not do this job if I didn't have you know, in-laws that were close and just being and understanding that that's a privilege and being able to uh, understand that everybody doesn't have that situation. Yeah. You know, and what do they do? So that's, yeah, and, that's really what has made it work in general. And, and for, for the coach that doesn't, I mean, it can be done without a doubt, but you have to find a support system. And that might be, that might not be in-laws. That might be understanding coaches that know at 530, I'm leaving to pick up my girls. And this weight room is locked down if I don't have a support staff with me. Yeah. So I either need, you know, I need to have a couple of rock star young, guy, young guys and gals that are going to run this room for the last group. And I'm out. Or I need to have a wife like, like I do, who is a badass with the kids and, you know, knocks out the job, goes, picks them up. Like she's doing a lot of things I can't do. That's for sure. You know, my girls start crying. I'm, I don't know what to do. You know, that's the, you know, but you, you just, you have to, you have to find that support system wherever it is, whether it's in-laws family friends or just the coaching staffs who are like who are understanding of hey your your kids are coming coming first go take care of the family okay oh good well so you know you're showing a lot of qualities that are probably sounds like very different even than your dad right and you know changing it what what two qualities right now are you seeing as far as um anything with strength and conditioning, leadership, work-life balance um, right now that are very important? Like what are the two most important qualities to you? Right now it's, um, it's, it's that work-life balance is obviously you can kind of tell it's a, it's a big forefront of my mind, but now I'm, I'm really looking more into staff development because Obviously, if this is going to continue, if I'm going to keep on this path and I'm going to do it right, I'm going to, I got to have manpower. I have to have um, assistant coaches that when I step out of the room, nothing changes. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're getting there. So, I mean, uh, I'm sure you, you've met uh, Mike Christinger at Perry High School. Um, he's another, uh, he's the Ohio state director. So I actually hired one of his former interns and the kid has done a great job. His name is Derek Dernier. Um, he's very sharp, doing a great job, bonds real well with the kids. But the, the biggest difference now is he's got to work on his presence in that room. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of years running weight rooms by myself, 60, 70 guys, mm -hmm. but being able to command that room. And he, he's, he's just about there. You know, he's, he's getting to that point where now it's going to be like, Hey, Derek, don't just run the warm up, run the show today. I'm going to just watch. And he's going to knock it out. I know he can, if um, our freshmen come in or our strength camp com comes in, he can knock that one out. 
but uh, when varsity football rolls in with 70 kids and they are chomping at the bit to literally break steel, that's uh, that's what I want to see if he's capable of. And we got a couple of months here before uh, we find out if he can handle that. I think he's going to be up to it, but we'll see. Okay. So, yeah, you talked about you're having him do the uh, the warm-up and the mm-hmm. – Leading it, yeah, that's a good way to get it set up. And that's not the only thing. I mean, he's got he'll have sections of the war of the of the workout. You know, I'll take half the guys in the primary. We'll put young guys in accessories and um, just to utilize the square footage we got and all that. Um, and he's doing a great job. I just, you know, the, I'm curious to see how he handles the big show, the big show of a lot of guys and doing it so well. Yeah. Doing it so no, well. that's that's tough for any. Co- it doesn't matter. You, oh, you've been at college or the pros or okay. I want to see you wrangle seventy kids between the age of fourteen and seventeen, and uh, <laughs> that's all. That's a whole new level right there. Well, that that leads me to my next question. A little bit about you know failure, right? You're setting this guy up for <laughs> how has failure failure shaped your career where it's at right now with your kids. Oh Jesus, we fail every day. We're we're gonna they're high school kids. We're gonna fail at something. If you haven't failed, you haven't pushed the envelope at all. It's just, you you just you know reviewed a standardized test. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's why I think. Um, I mean, I try to set it up that if when when kids fail, that it's not gonna have catastrophic consequence. You know yeah. that. We're not going to overload a kid with so much weight that if he fails, he's going to get hurt or his spotter's going to get hurt or whatever the case, or somebody around him will get hurt. Um, I think that's important. But they're high school kids. They're going to fail. And being a parent now has really made me see, I mean, you, you've watched your kids grow up. How many times is they're learning how to, to walk, go from crawling to walking? Did they fall on their face and cry? All the time. You know, they, you have to let them fail a little bit, you know, and then go like, okay, what went wrong? It's like, okay, kid just failed on a front squat. What went wrong? It's like, oh man, I just, that bar, I I kept squatting, the bar kept going down. It's like, it's posture. Okay. What happened is you got in that front rack and those elbows dropped. And now the only thing holding up 350 pounds was your wrist and your wrist can't do that. And they kind of, you know, you see a light bulb go off. Like, okay, that's success right there. We're, we're, you know, they figured out the why. We're going. But I mean, I've I have failed at everything at least twice. You know, at least. So I, I walked into St. Ed's February of 2016, hearing people in my ear go like, "Listen, it's the what that weight room is the wild west," and it was when I first got there. You know, and credit to the kids that were not only going in there, but building themselves into just iron men that won a lot of rings and state championships. But they go, this place is the Wild West. You need to lay down the law and make sure everybody knows it's your way or the highway. And I got, you know, I let myself get talked up a little bit and went in going, you know what, fellas, it's my way or the highway. This is my house now. And I did that to a group of teams that had seven state championships within the last two years. <laughs> and when you, I mean, you have to realize, especially dealing with young males, you know, if you go and you speak to your ego, you're going to get the ego. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't help it. I mean, you're going to tell a kid, he just, he started on two state championship football teams. Hey, no, you're doing this all wrong. My way or the highway. He's going to go, well, two rings, uh, what do I need you for? You know what I mean? Because yeah. you didn't speak to logic or reason. You spoke to a young man's ego of, well, you know, how do you, how do you present it? Do you, are you um, speaking to, hey, think, you know, think about this. You've done this very well. Change this. It's going to take you to the next level versus, no, my way or the highway. You know, uh, you know, most young men when confronted with resistance are going to resist it. 
you know, that's part of what makes us us and it's not good, bad or otherwise. It's just how it is. That was the first lesson I learned real quick. I'm like, okay, I got to rethink this. I can't just walk in and be like, hey, my way or the highway because their way just won a lot of state championships recently. Yeah. So, okay, what do you guys do? Okay. So now, sorry about that. Put that stuff in there. So how am I going to retool this and make it a little better? It's like, yeah, you squat 500 pounds, young man. Great job. Okay, but you said your hips always hurt, right? Add this, take the, you know, take that pain away or um, change, the, you know, just a little tweak here, a little tweak there. Tell you what, try hitting these percentages that I marked out for you and then see what happens on this last set when you rep it out. And that, you know, having to, having to see the reason of the why of the expertise as opposed to just that. But there's, I mean, we don't have enough time to cover every example of how I fail. There's, there's plenty of them in there. <laughs> Lots of it. Well, it sounds like you have, you know, a lot of influence from others and reassessing and learning. Who are three people right now that I should be learning from? Three, three people that I would, I would definitely be learning from. Um, definitely Steve Russell. Um, a lot of people don't know him. Maybe he's gonna, he's gonna speak a lot more. But that is a guy I, I, um, who is my former boss, and a lot of his, his concepts are, aren't just the way to be a coach. I would definitely be hearing that man out um, and looking him up. Uh, let's see, as far as um, in the NHSSCA, um, when Carlo Alvarez speaks, I listen right away. There's a lot of there's a whole lot of experience and a lot of stuff there. Is he um, a baseball guy? Is that his background? He would tell you, he would tell you he's a football guy. Um, he's, his professional experience was in major league baseball. Um, but I tell you what, I would, I would ask him that, but I think his, uh, I think his heart is in football. He raves about how much he loves his linemen. So but I, I mean, we're not, we're, none of us are baseball guys or football guys. I mean, we get hyped over, over guys and gals that come in with enthusiasm and want to train like a psychopath, you know? I mean, I had gym at Solon high school. I had gymnasts that just wanted to train like a psychopath. Love them. My favorite people in the world. It could be an offensive lineman. It could be a wrestler. It could be a basketball player. If you want, if, if you're at Ed's and you want to train like a psycho, you're my boy. Period of the story. Um, and I don't, I, you know, there's those two people, but I really wouldn't listen to just one person. There's so much stuff out there. I think it's just listening to the principles they're talking about, comparing that with personal experience, and just going, okay, you have to at least listen and see. Like, does this make sense to me? Is this part of what I do? Or is this a load of crap? So if um, I first started reading a lot of Kelly Surrett um, when I was uh, at Weber, so doing all the mobility wads and all that. And recently you hear a lot about uh, uh, go to movement systems. And either way, what you're talking about when you're, talking about either if you listen to those principles either, both of them want to achieve ankle mobility in the outside big toe you want to create that you know create the outside of big toe or kelly Surratt would say create torque uh goda would say create a bow either way what you're looking at is an athlete in motion should have kneecap outside big toe and their methods for getting there are different but they have the same goal, so I'm listening to both of them. How are you getting there? Why not use a bit of both? Why not use some of Kelly Surratt's band distraction? Um, get those joints, you know, isolated and in place. Why not listen to what Go to Movement Prep's doing? Here, here's a great principle they're using: um, slow motion video capture to see how t how an athlete moves. I've been doing that now 
more than anything and just going slow motion what just watch a hand clean high pull video that okay now see this see how your heels pitch up as you initiate the pull we got to get rid of that we got to dig those heels and go right through a flat foot and finish on ball of your foot and then replay it again those are those are great principles and everybody's got a lot of good ones so i use a lot of 531 but 531 started with west side barbell west side barbell started with a lot of super training and and rushing russian uh olympic lifters so one of the same principles everybody's looking at to uh and how's that going to fit so okay so yeah, you talk about those concepts. What are you working on right now to implement? Like, what are you in the beginning stages of like, yeah, I want to get this in my program and, but I'm not exactly, I might fail at it a little bit. Where are you at with that right now? What, what types of things are you hoping to implement? Maybe, you know, that you have them down pat two, three years from now. Down, I, I want to have our Olympic lifts and the associated percentages with them down in the next year. So all the, all the um, Olympic variations, uh, a trap bar jump, a hand clean pull, a hand clean high pull. Um, to be honest, I don't know if we'll ever, if we will keep catching cleans or not. Um, but, you know, one of the principles, how we're creating leg drive. And so if I'm gonna start athletes on hand clean, a hand clean pull versus a high pull. Am I going to base it off a clean where they don't have the technical prowess to actually catch the bar? I'm going to base it off of deadlift or their squat. And what's that associated percentage and try and map that out. So can I guarantee that I'm going to have a kid move a bar fast with violent intent on a hand clean pull using 50% of their trap bar deadlift or 40% or, you know, what's that range going to be? Okay. And then, I mean, we're getting to the point now we're going to need badly need the technology in that room to record hyper accurate bar speed. So um, I played with a lot of them. Um, the problem I had with like a push band is that it's so inconsistent and I, I don't want, I don't want to double or triple the number of cell phones in the room. If I put iPads in that room, they will be destroyed. There's no doubt about it. Um, I would re I just wish somebody would come up with a, uh, like you remember those old school Tendo units. Yep. You just, can we make one of those out of depleted uranium that'll never break and just give me either I want to, I want to record average bar speed or peak bar speed velocity. Just give me one of those two. Let me drop it on the ground and just have one number. Okay. So I can have put you on tried a, perch yet? I haven't tried perch at all, but that's what I've heard. Where you know what? I, I played with it at the national conference and it's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. I like it, but I mean, we're talking, I think, you know, iPad attachment, the whole, the whole get up. It's a lot of money. I'm not going to say what I, what I, what the dollar amount that came to mind. Cause if I mess it up, I don't want to, you know, screw perch. Cause they, I'll tell you this, they came up with a great product. No doubt about it. But when you're like me, where it's, you know, man, we're running out of 45 pound plates in the weight room and we have more racks than we have straight bars that function and more racks than benches to go in that rack for bench pressing. Not yet time to worry about technology. You know, I need that infrastructure. I need to have enough plates for every rack. I need to have enough bars for every rack. And now we've, um, this past year, right about September, October, we finally finished all those little projects. So now I can really get into, um, looking at what kind of tech is going to give us the next leg up. Yeah. 
No, I agree. That's a great, I mean, we're small school coaches, right? And that's one of the biggest problems that we have in general is, yeah, what do you put your money into and when you raise it? Because if we've raised it, we've worked for it. Yeah. Well, I'm, we're not, we're not a small school, but you know what? We just, we just put in a new cafeteria that was multiple millions of dollars. And there's money going everywhere in this private school, which is based on how many kids come in and pay tuition. And when you're racking up, when the school has almost 60 state championships, you know, it's hard to explain why your sport performance facility needs more money. You know, that's a, it is a tough sell and people are starting, you know, the world is starting to realize the benefit of it, but you know, even without all the fancy equipment and technology, our injury rates are going through the basement floor and our guys are doing a lot of winning and their performance is going up, you mm -hmm. know, which it's a double-edged sword. You know, what do you need something to track, to track bar speed velocity? You know, it, it becomes a tough sell. Yeah. It's not a, you know, I've got a great, uh, great budget. Our AD has fought a lot for us, but you know, some of the projects that we have in mind is going to take more than the normal budget. Yeah. So. That's why we need a coach. I just went and visited the, you know, our top football school in the state for the biggest school class. And yeah, they have a great strength coach and they're not doing anything with tech. They're doing like what you're talking about, percentages of the Olympic lifts and variations of the Olympic lifts. So yeah. it's always fun to see if we can find a way. And, you know, I know like you're talking tech is with our female athletes. That's really where I want to implement the tech, you know, mm -hmm. just that understanding in the bar path, how it's going yeah. and moving the bar fast. Like we don't have to lift super heavy how fast are we going to move it? And then how close can you get to the bar path? What we yeah. need? I think those whys would be a big motivation tool compared to, Oh, we just got to lift heavy today yeah. or this percentage. So it takes all kinds of kinds. So it's fun to hear that yeah. you're, I definitely, I, I want to, I want a better way to create intent. Yes. You know, like they, some of these kids just don't understand like, Hey, make that bar, make some noise. Mm-hmm. And the, they don't understand the, the click clack that happens when you do a, a real good speed pull, yes. you know, and I, I've taken these Olympic lifting videos of guys in training, like guys just listen and you can just hear the snap of the bar, not even the guy's legs, but the bar. I'm like, that's what it should sound like. And they kind of still look at me like what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know, or you know what they're again, a lot of young males, they want big heavy weights on the bar. So how are we going to discuss what's too light, what's too heavy, where should you be at? And having, you know, peak velocity and say, if it if you can move faster than this number, add, add 10 pounds, do your next set. Or if it falls below this number, decrease weight. You know, that we can wrap our heads around. that, And that becomes a very um aggressive yet systematic progression okay so. yeah fun stuff we could talk this all day oh, yeah. love talking strength and conditioning with you uh so actually that brings us to our next point um as the listeners heard at the beginning you we're bringing the big time strength and football clinic to minnesota i'm excited mm -hmm. we're bringing it to my school in dasa Kokato. And you are our NHSSCA sponsored speaker. So talk to us. What are you going to be talking about in Minnesota? Well, I'm going to kind of, I'm, I'm not an Olympic lifter. And I'm, you know what, our friend uh, who's a good friend of the NHSSCA presented a lot, um, was with Dynamic Fitness and Strength once upon a time, named uh, Steve Holt. Um, he would tell you I'm a terrible Olympic lifter. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I'll send a video sometime that he will just rip me to shreds, but I'm at least competent and it's, it's changing my abilities athletically and the same principles are changing what our kids can do athletically on a football field specifically. And 
Yeah, what I mean, there's application right now that I've actually tested out and tried, and now we're rolling it again with our spring sports. But it is just these different variations of Olympic lifts, the percentages we need to use, and the concepts um, that we're using have made a, a insane difference on the football field and now the basketball court. Um, it's a, it's a night and day difference. And I had the opportunity with Steve and uh, Leo Toten to really see the long-term athlete development of Olympic lifters. And like, where does Olympic, where do Olympic lifters start out? Well, you're going to find out they do a lot of um, ISO holds and eccentric tempos and they get really freaking strong really fast. And they have a foundation of absolutely psychotic amounts of strength. And you, you start to realize that just catching a clean or dropping into a split jerk is sport skill. That, that is a skill specific sport to Olympic weightlifting. And so, okay, let's separate that from that sport skill from every other sport and just look at what transfers over. Okay. Creating a foundation of strength and a, and a hinge on a squat. Well, we're all going to need that in every sport. And how about absolutely psychotically, relentlessly violent triple extension? But even then, if you see a lot of, a lot of folks that will post their clean videos on Twitter talking about snap, they're always talking about snappy hips, snappy hips, snappy hips. Once you dig in, you realize it's not snappy hips, it's leg drive. It's it's a vertical displacement. It's all about leg drive and the snap of the hip becomes um, secondary and it happens naturally. And that's where light bulbs started going off. And just, there's a, there's a lot of details to it, I'll tell you that, but going into that development of a young Olympic lifter and seeing the why and the how those are the things we started using and um hopefully we'll be talking about in january about how that's helped us win a state championship in football and uh all that we'll find out we have the uh we have about 48 hours from now we have the state semifinals so fingers crossed but i'll just from from a numbers perspective you know, we took football players, based their percentages on their deadlift, and we didn't catch a clean for about three, four months until my coaches really got pissed. But we practiced the catch. And then we went to a hang clean. Everybody hit 30, 30 to 40 pound PRs the first day. Wow. So that, I mean, it's like, holy shit, if, that, if that's what we can do, and the only thing holding a lot of these kids back is their ability to turn the bar over and make sense of catching it. Why are we catching? Why am I catching? Why am I worried about snatch grip or clean grip? Pick one, load the hell out of it, and figure out how to move it with violent intent. And you, doing that, you see our guys all of a sudden, they block and they tackle with violent intent and they run the ball or they run down the ball with violent intent. And that is extremely valuable to our coaches and me. And so that's, uh, that's what's in store. I'm taking videos of kids right now. We'll see how, uh, we'll see how that turns out. And the, the more I go at it, the more questions I seem to have. Yeah. So I was just, I was just uh, in Steve's ear the other day. Uh, like, Hey, that's a pretty good clean, you know, clean high pull right and just shredding it and some of the coaching cues i'm using i'm realizing like well that's not going to help our guys i gotta i gotta redo that and start reteaching it again and again and again so yeah oh that, that's exciting it's a hot topic right now that... yeah oh we're gonna we're gonna dive in we're gonna go down a couple rabbit holes with that one yeah i mean you're gonna have some opinions especially with the football crowd and yeah yeah i'm excited for it good good well, um, I know I've learned a lot 
from from you, what on your end can we as other strength coaches do to pour into you as a strength coach? Uh, I would say kick your opinions to the curb and just post facts and just listen to facts. So okay. I'll I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. I hate social media with a passion and you know, I I've stopped. I, I want to post and promote our kids and all that, but I just want to stay off of it. Cause I'm tired of hearing all the, all the BS about, Oh no, you shouldn't do this. You should do this. Or this is a legit squad or that is a legit squad. It's, listen, there, there's a lot of things that, that work. And when somebody speaks about what works for them, why can't you just listen and take it under advisement and see if it, you know, I mean, you can, you can learn from everybody, you know, and sometimes it's learning what not to do. That's fine. Okay. So, you know, you might watch Olympic lifters all in a heel lift and you watch go to movement prep on slant boards and uh, Carlo Alvarez using his mo his uh, mo flex with toe elevation, and just let him let him talk about the why. You don't need to comment. Keep your mouth shut. You know I don't want to hear what you think is right or wrong anyway. Okay. And there and the worst part about the, of the social media aspect is you're you're gonna hear a lot of people say things they won't say to your face. You know they'll it'd be. You know, hey, great presentation, but if you put it on Twitter, they would be ripping you to shreds. And I, you know, I think we got to get past that and realize we're all looking for the same goal. We're especially in the high school ranks, we're trying to keep these kids off the damn operating table. So, you know, I'm, you know, I played six years of college football, and because I'm a genius, I got into. Uh, boxing and then mis mixed martial arts. Okay. There are blank spots in my memory and they become more frequent. Okay. I won't do this forever, but, um, you know, are, are you guys actually training the neck enough? Because that shit does matter. And if so, how? And there are some people who would rip me for the fact that I use bands instead of a neck machine to train the neck or bands instead of manual neck. But I'll tell you this, think what you want, here are the facts. We add two inches of circumference to every neck per, per calendar year at St. Ed's. Okay, we have had two, con two confirmed concussions. I say confirmed as in, okay, this kid is held out of practice in games. We've had two in three years. It's making a difference. So, and that's varsity football. And these kids are savages at practice. So, you know, just hear what people have to say. And if that, I think that's what we get, have to do for each other. And I, I think more and more, we, ha we have to realize that we're on the side of strength coaches, not on the side of our school. Because it's like, I should be able to go and speak to so um, one of my best friends, he's coming over tonight, actually, is the head strength coach and assistant strength coach of our rival school. So the St. Ed, St. Ignatius um, rivalry is deep. It's hated. Um, and just for the record, uh, St. Ed's has won the last four. I'm just going to make sure that's noted. But they're going to be over tonight for dinner with all their friends and all that. And we're going to talk strength and conditioning and we're going to talk snatch grip versus clean grip. And we're going to, we're going to throw all that against the wall. I got, I've gotten some of it started back here on the uh, dry erase board. And we're going to throw that against the wall and see what sticks. And we're and we share programs and it's, it's never going to be the same program. Our rooms are different. Our kids are different. There's going to be tons of very, there's too much variation, but you know, what are we in this business for? We're in this for kids to, for high school men and women to have guidance when we wish we had it, right? I wish somebody would have taught me about how to treat my spine so I didn't end up freaking paralyzed or uh, nutrition so I would have been, you know, 280 instead of 380 in high school. 
you know, and we, we all, we all have something that we wished for that we could have figured out back then. And we're supposed to be that person. And we got to focus on that instead of, uh, you know, whose kids have the best squat form or, you know, oh, you guys don't back squat, you front squat. Who gives a rip? You know, those are the things we got to, we got to cover. You know. I love all that, except isn't it like your wife's birthday tonight? That was last night. So oh, okay. that's why we so weren't talking not, last night. So you're not talking shop at her birthday party. No, then. hell no. <laughs> she, and she would, she would tell me to shut up pretty quick, but no, yesterday, here's the, you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate right now. And, you know, you talk about uh, equal gender pay. My wife has always doubled my salary. Anytime I've gotten a raise, she's a nurse practitioner and she's gotten a raise at the same time and it always doubles mine. Love it. So, um, so I mean, what can, you know, there's nothing I can buy her that she can't buy for herself. So she came home to dinner was cooked. The kids were not a mess. The house was clean. And I pulled out the, uh, our massage table and had that set up. So that, that was the, the birthday present yesterday. So yeah, I, I was I wasn't about to try and do the um, podcasts. I'm pre- preparing for that. That's the family for life balance. Got it. Or, got uh, it. Work yes, to life yes. balance. Okay, I got my days mixed up. You're all right then. You talk shop tonight like crazy. Oh, uh, that's the there's there's two things in this world that will keep me from not shutting up, and that's talking talking hunting or talking weights. <laughs> You know, people will talk politics and I'll just sit there very quietly and just <laughs> and not say a word. You talk weights, then I'm not going to shut up. There you go. Well, good. Well, it sounds like you're doing amazing things, Aggie. Uh, it just, I mean, being the presence in the boys who are turning into men, I mean, in their life and your family, all these things, What? what is it? that where you're at right now is your big time like what makes it big time for you even just like you saying it's money right you if you know your family like that's not the driving force what makes it that you're making it big time i think what makes anything big time for anybody is their purpose and that that purpose can't always be uh, a logo or a salary and You know, so I go, I go through and, you know, this time during the holidays, you know, these, our kids will just, um, our alumni will just stop back in the weight room and there's, there's, they don't set appointments. No, they just walk in and it's like my, my sons are coming back for the holidays and I go through airports and, you know, people recognize the logo and, but you see the change of these kids come back from college and talk about how much their college program is like ours and how they were like, you know, coach, none of my teammates ever learned how to clean. Well, they, they don't even know what a front squat is or, or it's something like that where it's there. You can tell you're making a, you're a difference. And I would take, making a difference over the salary 10 times out of 10. That's what makes it big time for me. And yet, you know, it's, it's now at a place like St. Ed's. And the fact is, you know, they, St. Ed's was winning state championships before I got there. And if I hadn't showed up, they still would be. There's a lot of really good sport coaches, a lot of talented kids that go there. Okay. The winning was going to happen. But is it is my presence changing the life of somebody or everybody? Are they are they learning lessons? Are they becoming better men? Are they avoiding the operating table? So, one of our uh, we've got this football player, and our joke right now is that he has literally had the same ankle rolled up on every game this year. We're entering the fifteenth game of the season. And every game he's had the same damn ankle rolled up on. It's, it's, it's Murphy's Laws in effect. And one of our playoff games, not only did he get rolled up on, he got knocked back over it and his knee started to hurt. But 
they did an MRI and while he's a lot of pain, he's real stiff, he doesn't have any ligament tears in the knee or the ankle. And I'm hoping that, you know, you know, you could, you could argue that something we did is keeping him in one piece. Is keeping them from, you know, okay, you're going to have to recover and do rehab, but you're not going to need surgery. So to put that kid where he's at now, I think that's what makes it, you have to find those things like, you know, I was at Solon High School. We didn't win state championships, but there's still a why. There's still something about that's big time. It only has to be in my head. So it's got to be big time to me. And that's going to be contagious, but you know, you're going to deal with people that are going to, are not going to think that they're in the big time, no matter where they're at. You could stick them at Ohio state. It wouldn't be good enough for them to think it's big time. And that that's more my mindset than anything else. Yeah. Contagious. That's what stood yeah. out to me from that, right? What you're doing is hopefully you, now you're spreading your mission to others so that they get fired up about it. Exactly. Well, good, good. All right, we're gonna go a fast, uh, a fast three. You get, you get a couple sentence answers. Favorite sign in the weight room. Favorite sign is the fact that, or, I I spray painted it on the weight room wall. It's about a, it's a quote from the poem Invictus. I think what any God, whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. All right. Uh, book that was your game changer related to how you train athletes Ooh. damn that's a good one uh i'll have to look and see what the name of the author is raising lions okay so let me uh give me one second let me see what the uh Ah. Here you go. Good for being a parent and a uh, strength coach. Raising Lions, Joe Newman. I would definitely okay. check that out. That has nothing to do with X's and O's. Everybody's got, there's a lot of brilliant people that covered the X's and O's and percentages. You know, that that's a game changer. Game changer. Uh, you said you cook favorite wild game meal that you cook. My favorite or my wife's favorite? That's the, that's the, so yeah. um, doing a uh, chicken fried venison um, and making it into uh, like a chicken parm pasta meal. That seems to be everybody's favorite. Okay. So uh, my favorite's the, uh, bacon wrap back straps on the smoker yes that yeah. is like a specialty for my husband well yeah. it, it's like uh sometimes i put like stuffing in there and then their jalapeno and cream cheese so i see that i'll be taking notes but i'll tell you i'll tell you this all right and this is gonna make a lot of people really like turn their head i can i can cook up some squirrel and most people will not <laughs> realize so we did that once i mixed in um i had a um, chicken nuggets and like uh, strombolis made of squirrel and some with chicken and nobody had an idea there was two different meats in there. Really? So, oh, this one's really good. It's rich. It's chicken thighs, squirrels. <sighs> and, and it made one lady just like just stop <laughs> and kind of freak out a little bit, but it's good. All right. So it's a little bit of squirrel. Uh, and then a small school coach, so high school or small college coach who is just killing it right now. Oh, man. Um, so I would say high, a high school coach that's killing it. Um, check it out on Twitter. His name is Daniel Wedding at Austintown Fitch. He's always putting up some good stuff, what these kids are doing. And you can tell these kids are fired up with what they're doing. And um, that's someone you can actually check out on uh, Twitter, um, Daniel Wedding. And then uh, small colleges that are killing it. Um, 
let's see here. Um, the one guy I'm thinking of is actually he just took a, he just started at uh, Worcester College. And his name is Mike Navratil. He's actually a St. Ed's grad. Um, he graduated before I got there. We've talked a little bit, but um, he and I talked when he was an intern at uh, University of Akron, or he was a GA rather. And this kid is sharp. And he's just getting started at Worcester. Um, he's going to do some big things, in my opinion. And uh, I'm really interested to see how that goes. Okay. All right. Say his name again. The... Mike Navratil. Mike I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll I have to. It. I have to like. Uh, I need help spelling it because I'm. Uh, one thing you don't know about me, I'm brutally dyslexic. <laughs> So N A V R A T I L. R A T I L. Yeah, he's at the College of Worcester here in Ohio. Okay. Well, good. Well, uh, you said you don't like social media, but we know you're out there. Where can people find you if they want to see what you're doing and uh, or reach out to you? So uh, for the Twitter for the, the weight room Twitter is capital E D S strength or Ed strength. And then the personal one um, where you might actually find some of the hunting stuff I'll post every blue moon is uh, at Coach Augie on Twitter. I haven't figured out Instagram yet. So I'm just saying, I'm going to let my assistant handle that one. And uh, <laughs> I'll just show him what to post and let him run with that, I think. So that, that part's not for me. All right. Well, good. Uh, this has been awesome. I love just having a conversation with you. You have a... Uh, just a calm presence that is needed in strength and conditioning right now. And I can tell you're making a huge impact. So I can't wait for you to come to Minnesota to come to. Yeah, wait. It's going to be fun. Yes. And you're going to be speaking at another clinic. So these clinics are awesome. I'm hearing a lot of buzz about it already. And I know that you are going to uh, just cause a buzz. And actually, I'm waiting on, not waiting, but our football team is playing in the state championship this Saturday. So I can't wait to see, hopefully that'll really make a big difference with our clinic as well. So exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, hopefully we're punching our ticket to the state championship on Friday. So fingers crossed, we're playing a really good, a really good upper Arlington team. Who's got another strength coach in the NHSSCA. Um, so they're they're a solid team and these kids can play freaking football so so it'll be it'll be a, a great game can't wait to get there awesome well Augie thank you very much uh I'm excited to keep watching your career and the awesome things you're doing oh thank you I appreciate your time all right hey Good this is the episode of the big time strength podcast uh whenever you're listening to it wherever you're at I hope you have a great week I hope you impact a lot of lives this week and keep going with the great stuff that you're doing. See ya. How was that? I am so grateful that you got to meet Augie. And now that you have, we need to give a little bit of special love right now to our sponsors and our presenters that are taking a chance on us with the big time strength and football clinic. So you heard Augie is out presenting for the national high school strength coaches association, head on over right now to nhssca.us and get signed up. If you are not, um, if you've never been to an event with the NHSSCA, you are missing out. It is proof of connection, companionship, and learning from others who are directly in the field. So they promise to educate and equip and empower you. And that is definitely what they do. So head on over to NHSSCA. Uh, Team Builder has a special shout out for the football clinic. They are now offering a 52 week football strength and conditioning program that is free with any trial. As you may recall, the New England Patriots squat up to 90% of their one rep max deep into the playoffs. If your in-season philosophy is simply to maintain, then you're doing it wrong. You can get the program once you start the 14-day trial with Team Builder by heading over to teambuilder.com. 
Now that you have heard about the Big Time Strength and Football Clinic on January 8th, we want you to know that Powerlift will be there and they can't wait to talk to you in person about their top of the line strength and conditioning equipment. Their weight equipment is made from the toughest material that can withstand excessive use from coaches and athletes alike. It's sought after for its unique design and customized appearance, its affordability and superior warranty that training facilities want and need. If you are attending the Big Time Strength and Football Clinic on January 8th, find Tim O'Neill and talk to him about how Powerlift can take your athletic facility from concept to completion. And we also have Leading Edge Fundraising, the top of the line fundraising for card and uh, community discounts. So make sure to go to leadingedgefundraising.com and check them out. Have a great week.